Well, you can put it through on the green phone there, boys. Thank you. Who is this? Max, my manager. Let me just get this. Hello? Hello, boy. Max. Hello, son. It's Max here, your old boss and manager. Listen, son. Yeah? Son, the new marketing the new marketing gimmick we're doing this week, son, we're not in the air, are we? Uh, no, we're not, Max, no. Yes, I'm sorry if I'm talking a bit loud, son, but I've got to get it. Yeah? Yeah? Son, I don't want the punters to hear about this yet because I know somebody will cash in on it. Yeah? You know the way? Yes, yes, son. I you know, know the Max. way that great radio station of yours, you've got all the others. Yeah? You're all robbing you, rob, robbing the ideas left, I... right and centre, son. <laughs> yes. Son, I I've know. just marketed it. Yes? I had a dream last night and I says I reckon it's possible, Max. Well, what is it, Max? Stereo tuners that... That will tune into nothing but 103 FM, son. That's a great idea, Sean, I Max. can't stop now. I'll talk to you later, son. Okay. Sean, I was being given a lift home last night from, uh, from, um, one of the flicks in town, son. Yeah? And a policeman says he stopped the car. My mate, I thought he was a friend, son. Yeah? The copper says, I'm going to throw the book at you, boy. Yeah? No lights, two bald tires, no number plates, no windscreen wipers, no indicators. Well, Jimmy turns around to me and he says, You know, Max, I told you this car wasn't worth pinching. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> nearly, nearly clocked the ticker, boy. I'll you talk really to did. you in a, in a little while. <laughs> okay. Can't be messing around now. Over and under. Over and under. Just coming up on 17 minutes to four right now. Oh. Hello, punk. Yes? You're not going to guess who this is, pal. I think I know. This is your old pal back from Carmel, California. This is the mayor of this sleepy little western coast town, Clint Eastwood. Clint, hello there. And you know, pal... What's that? I've just brought my horse in on the plane. <laughs> you? <laughs> and if you look out your window, yes. you'll see me talking to you from one of your little credit card telephone boxes. In at Leeson the top Street? Of Leeson Street. I thought so. And you know, pal... What's that? I'm coming down there to talk to you. Why, Clint? Because I hear you've been talking about my special guest next month. Uh, who is that again? I'm having His Holiness Pope John Paul to dinner in Carmel. <laughs> uh, what? Yeah. What about me? You'll never be on it, fella. Oh, no. I'll be down there to talk to you later. <laughs> this is Clint Eastwood saying, Yes. Feeling lucky? Yes. Make my day. <laughs> Punk. Thank you. Can you make sure he doesn't get through again this afternoon? Five to four news coming up in five minutes' time, and we'll take a look at some birthdays in about ten or fifteen minutes. Got a phone call lined up here, boys. Who is this? Hello? What in the large name is he saying on that? Goodness me. Uh, What's he talking about? <laughs> Hello? Hello, Jerry. Yes. I can't make head or tail of what you're talking about there, but nonetheless, I'm going to mind my own business. This is Des Farry calling uh, Garrett, of course, from yes. Doyle Aaron here with my first report for a Wednesday. Okay, Des. How are you, chum? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine, too. Oh, good. Have you a Fine, fine. Good. Have you a report? Indeed, I do have a report, pal. Terrific. Just a short one, as the main one comes up between four and five. Well, this is four to five. I was talking to one of the politicians here. He was telling me he was into big game hunting in Africa before he went into politics. Yes? I suppose many people will say there's not much difference. I was going to say that. He was telling me he bagged a lion. Bagged a lion? That's right. He bagged it. Really? Bagged it to go away. <laughs> I knew it'd catch out one of these days with the old flourished accent. Oh. I'll talk to you between four and five. Okay. Cheerio, chum. Cheerio, Des. He'll be back with us a little later this hour. What we're doing is we're playing a little joke on Sally, our secretary. She's downstairs. Have we got her on the line? She's. She thinks the phone is actually ringing. <laughs> Let me just get this. Hold on. Uh, Bobby, just give me give me the green when she's actually on. Is she on? Oh, good. Hang on a sec. Uh, hello, is that Dublin double two double two? Um, no, this is Dublin two 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 two. Sally oh. speaking. Oh, I'm sorry for bothering you. That's all right. The phone was ringing anyway. We're cruising Bye. with Gareth <laughs> O'Callaghan on Energy 103 in Dublin. the reason why one or two of our characters have been sounding a little bit, uh, let's just say, croaky in the throat. But we're trying to rectify the matter now. Uh, hopefully we'll have one or two of them on before six this evening. 4.37. In the meantime, here's a comedy sketch uh, quite a number of you wrote in to hear again. It's from an old Rick Dees program a couple of years ago. I I'm not going to say any more on it. I just got a note here. I... It says, Rick, your car will not be ready for three weeks. And I have a German car. I took it in to be repaired, and this is it. I'm going to put the guy on the air. I've had it. I told this guy if he didn't get this car fixed in one day, it was just like a wiper blade thing or something, he goes on the radio, and I'm going to get this. Put him on. Klaus Autohaus, Klaus Meisterhoff speaking. Klaus, you may not recall this name, but the name is Rick Dees. Ah, and yes, Mr. Dees. I brought my car in there. And it was three days ago for a for little nothing. I, I thought that we were just going to change the, the fluid in the windshield wiper. Mr. Dees, the car was a complete fiasco. 
we had to replace the entire turbocharger. Wait a minute, pal. I don't have a turbocharger. Hmm. Well, no charge for the turbocharger. But in the meantime, we still need three weeks, Mr. Dees. Why would, does everything take three weeks? Now, come on. Mr. Dees, when was the last time you checked your Hintershine fluid? My Hintershine fluid? Yes, the Hintershine fluid. I don't know. I know. Probably never. And now the doppelganger is cracked, and you're going to have to pay the price. The, we, do oh, the doppelganger we is... Have to the we have to take the entire engine out. The doppelganger has to be shipped. New Hintershine fluid. I have only my assistant mechanic, Siegfried, from Dusseldorf. And we have to... We have cars backed up to the parking lot. Listen here. Wait. Just stop everything. Would you stop everything? First of all, I don't know what this Hintershine fluid stuff is. And uh, it's a German car. I want it fixed. And I want it today. I've got uh, errands to run. I'll now, see. Ca can't you ask Siegfried... I will ask Siegfried, I'll see what he can do. Oh, hold on one second. Siegfried, Siegfried, Franz der Schein Trunken, Rick Dies, Doppelganger. Yo, man, he can double this, man. And I tell you, I do it when I do it. I have one week for every time he calls back. He's up to four weeks now, man. Siegfried, Siegfried says the German car is a masterpiece, Mr. Dies, of engineering, and he is a fine craftsman. Oh, that's all. Uh, he's so... This so... cannot be rushed, Mr. Dies. I don't like this. I want this car now. I do. So, I've done everything that I can, Mr. Dees. Perhaps you could help with uh, slight workman's compensation, uh, grease things along. Work, uh, workman's compensation. It's just slight, uh, something. How about, oh, gee, not $100 again. $100? $100. So. $100. Would that be cash? Yeah. I'll ask, I'll ask Zixi. Zixi, Lagerschein, ein uh, Doppelganger, Hinterschein, $100. Looky here, man. What's in this Federal Express package that arrived even as we speak? A doppelganger filled with Hindershine fluid. This is truly a divine sign, man. Zixi drives your car by yeah, this afternoon. Right, I bet he will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have a wonderful <laughs> Eastwood, apparently, who's preparing for Pope John Paul II. Uh, and his visit to his hometown of Carmel next week. Hello? Yeah. Hello, pal. Hello, Clint. I'm calling you through your measly little listener's top ten at five just to have a little word with you, punk. Steady now. Because you know something? What's that? You just make me squirm. <laughs> I've been listening to you. You sound so insincere on that radio show. Yes. I'm coming down to teach you a lesson in broadcasting. Uh-huh. Do you remember Play Misty for me? It was great. Well, I was the top DJ in the South. Yeah. And I'm coming down there to take that show off you, boy. Mm -hmm. Because those people, those punters deserve more. Mm. And you know what I'm bringing with me? What are you bringing, I'm please? bringing the Winchester, no, boy. The Winchester. And the Magnum 356. The Magnum 356. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and no. the Colt. Not the Colt. And you won't ever know whatever happened to you, boy. No, please, Clint. This is Clint Eastwood <laughs> saying... You're making a mistake. Are you feeling lucky, punk? Yes. Because, you know, in all the excitement, I don't know whether I shot five or six shots around Stevens Green today <laughs> when I was looking at those little ducks. <laughs> Make my day. Punk. Punk. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Number six, this is Black on Energy 103.